Hi, I'm Kieran. I'm going to present on two-pass streaming algorithms for maximum bipartite matching. This is based on joint work with Dr. Christian Conrad. I'll start with some background. Given a graph, a matching is simply a subset of its edges where every vertex has degree at most one. A maximal matching is one such matching where if you were to add any other edge of the graph to the subset, it would break the maximal, it will break the matching property. Maximum matching is a largest possible matching in the graph. Finding a maximum matching is a well-studied problem and exact algorithms do exist. However, all of them require a random access to the edges of the graph. And this in fact is an infeasible requirement, especially when dealing with massive graphs. This problem was solved, however, uh, with the semi-streaming model of computation, where given a graph with n vertices, an algorithm is only allowed a sequential access to its edges, and using at most order of n poly log n space, it has to output a solution or an approximate solution to the problem. This <clears throat> an algorithm ideally uses only a few passes of the stream to accomplish this. Finding a maximum bipartite matching uh, in this model is a well-studied problem. Uh, and despite that, however, the best known one pass algorithm is a simple greedy algorithm that outputs a maximal matching, which is provably a half approximation. In 2012, it was shown that this half approximation can be beaten using a second pass of the stream. And in this two pass setting, uh, interestingly, all of the algorithms follow the same approach where the first pass runs that greedy algorithm, gets a maximal matching, and then the second pass increases the size of that matching. On the other hand, on the lower bound front, uh, there has been significant and recent work in the area for one pass of the stream. However, there have been no two pass results as of yet. We focus on the two pass setting and specifically on the aforementioned class of algorithms which is the only strategy proven to work. On the lower bound front, we show that the strategy, <clears throat> using the strategy, the best we can ever do is a two thirds approximation. Then on the algorithmic front, we show that even with a combination of the two dominant techniques in the area, we still can't push past the current state of the art two minus root two approximation. And so other strategies and techniques are required to do so. So on the algorithmic front, we find a meta algorithm that achieves exactly the current state of the art. And on the lower, and we prove the very first two pass lower bound. I'll start first with our lower bound result. So in order, <clears throat> in order to prove our lower bound, we use, we extend the work by Gore, Kapilov and Kana, uh, where they prove the exact same two thirds approximation, but in the one pass setting. And we show that in fact, their techniques and their methods can be extended to our two-pass setting. Their work relied on this dense family of Rizasemerity graphs, and our work relies on a similarly dense family of graphs. However, they have to contain at least one near-perfect matching. And in fact, we show that the construction uh, contains many near-perfect matchings, and this result may be of independent interest. So firstly, a Rousseau-Semery graph is simply a graph whose edge set is made up of a union of induced matchings, each of the same size. In this case, there are four induced matchings, each of size three. What Gohl and Kapilov and Kana prove is that uh, there exists a very dense Rousseau-Semery graph. And the main property here is that each Rousseau-Semery graph, sorry, the memory required to store the edges of the Rousseau-Semery graph is significantly greater than what's allowed by the semi-streaming model of computation. <clears throat> they prove their lower bound using the well-known connection between the two-party communication complexity and lower bound results. And their setup is as follows. They start first with the really dense user semi graph, which they prove exists. Then for each induced matching, they remove randomly remove a small fraction of its edges. Then, <clears throat> from all of the induced matchings, they randomly pick one to be a special matching and introduce these added uh, new sets of outer vertices to form a perfect matching between the vertices not matched by the special matching. And this 
<coughs> constructs a random graph. So, and then in the two-party communication setup, the edges of the remaining com the remaining Susasamrady graph is given to player one, while the outer edges are given to player two. The goal of the protocol is to then output a two-thirds uh, matching, which is greater than a two-thirds approximation. Difficulty here is that player one doesn't have knowledge of which of the uh, matchings was chosen to be the special one, whereas player two doesn't know which of the edges have been randomly removed. Then they prove that the communication complexity of such a protocol is in fact greater than what's allowed by the semi-streaming model, which then translates to a lower bound for uh, <clears throat> a lower bound for semi-streaming algorithms. So we followed a, a, we followed a similar approach using the same techniques and the same methods. However, in our two pass setting, uh, the, <clears throat> we have that the first pass finds a maximal matching and only a maximal matching. And so to extend their results, what we have to do is give both players knowledge of a maximal matching without affecting the difficulty of the problem. And so the first thing to observe now is that in fact, the maximal matching in this graph on the right here is <clears throat> in fact a perfect matching between these inner vertices, which is essentially a perfect matching in the Russo Semerity graph construction. And so we ask the question whether such a dense Russo Semerity graph actually does contain a perfect matching. We don't quite prove that result, but we prove something close where we, by construction, show that such a dense Russo Semerity graph contains, in fact, many of these disjoint near perfect matchings. Now, using this new Sussemerity graph, uh, <clears throat> now using this Sussemerity graph that we've just uh, constructed, uh, we can recreate the exact same setup as Gold Kaplov and Kana. However, now we know that there is definitely a near maximal matching in this graph. And so, to make this matching, in fact, maximal, what we do is we add these extra edges to make it uh, add these extra edges uh, appropriately. Uh, and then prove that even with the addition of these edges, the difficulty of the we, it doesn't affect the difficulty of the problem, thus extending the one pass result to this two pass setting and proving our result. Now moving on to the algorithmic front. So what we do is we combine the two dominant techniques in the area, and we find this novel meta algorithm that achieves exactly the current state of the art, and we show that the analysis is in fact tight by constructing a family of hard instance graphs. So our algorithm falls into this class of algorithms where we first find the maximal matching and then increase the size of that matching in the second pass. And the way we do that is by finding augmenting paths. So given a maximal matching or a matching in general, an augmenting path is simply one which starts with an unmatched vertex and then alternates between edges outside of the matching and inside of the matching finally ending with an unmatched vertex. Then uh, we can increase the size of the matching by simply deleting the edges of the previous matching. And now the goal to, of our algorithm is to try find as many of these disjoint augmenting parts as possible, since each one would increase the size of the matching by one. And we do this by combining the two dominant techniques in the area, namely subsampling with probability P and running this greedy D algorithm. This is an extended greedy algorithm, which computes instead a degree D bounded semi-incomplete matching. And what that is, is a matching who has, which has allows for degree one on one side of the bipartition as normal, but allows up to degree D on the other one. And so we combine these two techniques with the following algorithm on the right here. This algorithm, however, is best explained uh, by giving a hard instance graph example, uh, as seen on the right, uh, and a stream of, ed of its edges in adversarial order. And so the goal is to output the max, to find the maximum matching of this graph, which we denote here by M star. And so our algorithm starts as follows. We, in the first pass, we just run a simple greedy algorithm to output a maximal matching. And basically what that is, is when an edge arrives, as long as it doesn't break the matching property, it's added to the memory. However, if it would break the property, then it's just simply ignored. 
And by the end of the stream, we get, in fact, the maximal matching, which in this case is exactly a half approximation. Now, the goal of the second pass is to find as many disjoint augmenting paths as possible. And we do that by finding these left and right wings for each. Ideally, we want to find left and right wings for each edge of the maximal matching. And if we do that for every one of them, we'll get something like this. And if you see here, this, is a, this can be seen as finding a maximum matching in this left subgraph and independently finding a, right, a, max, a one in the right subgraph as well. And so the question is, how can we find these? Well, if we just simply uh, run a greedy algorithm to find the maximal matching again, we end up in a situation where we, we can't guarantee that we find augmenting parts at all. And so we use a combination of the two dominant techniques to do so. And so the first thing we do is we subsample the maximal matching with probability P. And then we keep only the edges which are incident on the subsampled matching and deleting the other ones to get these new uh, subgraphs, uh, H and H, the new left and right subgraphs, subsampled subgraphs. And now on this subsampled subgraph, we run the extended greedy algorithm, the greedy D algorithm, which outputs a semi-incomplete matching. Then we can immediately see that we find uh, many augmenting paths. And the number of augmenting paths that we find is dependent on the size of these semi-incomplete matchings, which uh, in this particular case is given by d times p over d plus p fraction of the size of a maximum matching in each of the subgraphs. Both for both left and right subgraphs. And so one thing to notice here is that though we may find many augmenting paths, not all of them are disjoint. And so with a little bit of analysis, then we find that the number of disjoint augmenting paths is exactly given by this following equation. And since each disjoint augmenting path increases the size of the uh, matching by one, and we initially started with a half approximation, our final matching is exactly given by, <clears throat> by this amount over here. And what we prove in our, main, uh, in our main lemmas is that no matter the bipartite graph or the arrival order of its edges, we can always guarantee that the final matching outputted by the algorithm is of size at least this amount. And so this analysis uh, relies heavily on bounding the size of these semi-incomplete matchings that we found from the second pass of our algorithm. We can do that as follows. Consider any bipartite graph G with some maximum matching M star and any stream of its edges. Then we subsample the inner vertices with probability P to get a subgraph H, which only contains the edges of G, which are incident on the subsampled inner vertices. And then we run our greedy D algorithm on this subsampled subgraph to get our final uh, semi incomplete matching M. So, one thing to notice is that this setup uh, simulates exactly what happens in the left and the right subgraphs. And so, bounding, uh, so bounding the size of the semi incomplete matching here translates directly to our algorithm as well. And so the proof is as follows. We start first by defining M star B prime to be the edges of the maximum matching, which are incident to the subsampled inner vertices. Then our goal is to see for every edge that is added by the greedy D algorithm, how many edges in this set M star B prime are blocked. In order to intuitively see this, we have to first assume that we don't know which of these inner vertices were subsampled. Now, as the algorithm adds an edge to the uh, memory of the graph, we know that firstly, this edge that's added has to be part of subgraph H. And so the inner vertex must be, have been subsampled. Then in the worst case, this is incident to an edge of the maximum matching. And so that edge belongs to M star B prime and one of these are blocked. The corresponding outer vertex is not as straightforward because the, <coughs> its inner vertex 
we don't know whether its inner vertex has been subsampled or not. And so we're in one of two cases. Either it was subsampled, and now we end up blocking a one over D fraction of this M star B edge, M star B prime edge, or it wasn't subsampled and we don't block any of it at all. So with an expectation, what we end up is, in expectation, we end up blocking a P over D fraction of this edge. And so in general, for every edge that's blocked, uh, for every edge that's added by our greedy D algorithm, at most one plus P over D fraction of the M star B prime edges are blocked. And so with a little bit of rearranging, we can show that uh, we can get back exactly our bound that was needed. And in our paper, we formalize this using Wald's equation. So with that, uh, we, pro we prove that the final matching returned is always at least a half plus P over D plus P minus P over 2D approximation of the maximum matching. So for different settings of D and P, we end up with different algorithms, each of which have their own approximation factors. When D is equal to one, the best we can do is a two minus root two approximation. And similarly for D is equal to two. However, for D is equal to three, we fall short of this barrier. And for D is equal to four and five and so on, we progressively get a worse and worse approximation factor. This then proves that even with a combination of the two dominant techniques, we still can't push past the current state of the art, two minus root two approximation. I'll conclude with a bit of discussion. So our two pass algorithm combines the two dominant techniques in the area to get a meta algorithm that achieves the current state of the art. For appropriate settings of D and P, we can actually get back Conrad's 2018 algorithm, which is the current state of the art, and Esfandiari's 2016 algorithm. Then we also prove that our analysis is in fact tight. And finally, with our, <clears throat> with our lower bound result, uh, we reduce the gap of possibility for this specific class of algorithms. So we ask the following questions. Can we extend other one pass lower bounds to this two pass setting? Is there a way to find an improved algorithm that does more than just computing a maximal matching in the first pass? And the age old question, can we beat a half approximation using just one pass of the stream? Thank you.